Obahin bebre na no opoku are no ma wa no Asante kwa toko no no so ni ebe di akun abua bua wo eti one to na sa kra bua nkwa ye di etri beto asem no frititi o e frititi od man kuma ade no ya fa anto de da na e frato od man kuma ba ade yi oba asante kwa toko kufo oku afra na na no ye ku anu o se kotoko je mi bi okufo ni ye e ku bi ebe di na nti asie wo asante kwa toko no no e di na kro fo ti di eti pimpim konfo hu bi bi o fa ni ti pimpim du ye ahin po asante kwa toko bu afo aku aku na na se etu no no aye ku ni mado aje aye ku bu e feri o Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the Unapologetic Negropian. In today's video, <sighs> polygamy, polygamy and Atlanta, they go hand in hand. It seems to be even the cool thing to do nowadays to be in a polygamous relationship. It's almost as if a whole host of African-American women have succumbed to the pressures of keeping their men monogamous in a monogamous relationship and thought, oh, well, the hell with it. Listen, if I can get something out of this relationship, if I can have a relationship where I don't have all the pressure of keeping this man to myself, then to hell with it. Why me? Why should I have all this pressure? Why should I have to deal with constantly worrying about whether my man is out there being faithful or not? Why bother fight against it? I may as well just accept that my husband or my significant other is going to go out and do whatever he's got to do. It's better if I don't try to fight it. It's better if I try to control it. It's better if I have knowledge about it. It's better if I know the person that my husband is doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G with. So many women have embraced polygamy. And why not? I mean, there are many benefits to being in a polygamous relationship, right? I mean, first of all, you've got all these sources of income coming into the one household. You've got a bunch of other people who are taking care of one another, taking care of your children being 100% faithful to one another and making sure that the family has everything it needs, both physically and spiritually. But with those benefits, there is an obvious downside. The question needs to be asked, when does it stop? How many women can this one man have or one man deal with? The cost of running a household with two or three women in it is going to be astronomical. It's astronomical running a house with just one woman in it. Sometimes with these types of guys, it just doesn't seem to be enough. They seem to want to have their cake and eat it. They want to have a different flavor every single day. And even if they have three, four, five women back at home, it doesn't matter, they'll still go out and and do whatever they need to do with other women outside of the house. It's crazy. So it does it really work. Now people have a lot of names for these types of guys that go into these polygamous relationships. Some people call them enlightened. Some people say that those are the types of men that should be shared amongst a number of women because there isn't many good men that can keep one woman. If one good man can keep five women, then so be it. I think that these types of men are greedy. And I think that the types of women that go into these polygamous relationships are damaged in one way or another. One such polygamous relationship between a woman, Netiri, and the one and only Minister Yada had people questioning whether polygamous relationships actually work. But that's not the only thing it questioned. It also questioned Minister Yada's ability to heal. You see, Minister Yada has touted himself as being the next Dr. CB, a Maribu who can cure anything and anyone. But in one situation, Minister Yada was left exposed. People realized that he was nothing but a fake. And in this video today, I'm going to show you how he was exposed because of his greed in a polygamous relationship with Neytiri. We're going to try and answer this important question. Does Minister Yada have the power 
to heal? Or is Minister Yada nothing more than a fraud? We're gonna to try to answer these questions, but first I'm gonna ask you, like always, to please like, subscribe, share, click the bell notification, and please consider supporting the channel on our Patreon link in the description. Now, as we discussed in the video a couple of days ago, we spoke about Minister Yada and his wife, currently now traveling Africa, and we sort of put out the reasons why they were there in Africa. A lot of people choose to believe that they are there to give themselves spiritual alignment, but I mean, if you know him and if you know about the friends that he keeps, then you can pretty much guess that it's not up to anything good. I did a little research on Minister Yada's wife, the woman who calls herself Divine Yada, and I must say, she has two components of her, which I'm struggling to deal with how they sort of come together. There's part of her that really looks like she is weak, that she is broken, you know, that she's in a situation where she, she feels like there is no other better place to go than to be with this man, a man who sleeps with other women. When you look at people who are trying to be devious in our community, making fake claims about abilities of being able to cure uh, certain sicknesses and illnesses, when you very much know you wouldn't do that yourself, then of course she is doing something which is illegal. She's kept this family together and this Minister Yada is clearly in a polygamous relationship. He's already been caught cheating and it doesn't seem to be stopping. We can get a bit more of a deeper insight to Minister Yada and his healing abilities if we listen to one of his ex-women. Okay, I call, I say we're ex-women because I doubt if he was married to her. This is where Natiri comes in, a beautiful Jamaican-American. Natiri is a typical woman who was lost at one point and was in search of her spiritual self and so she went on a spiritual journey. Do you know, a lot of these guys use this word spiritual and I don't even believe that they understand what that means um, because a, a lot of them use it as a front or as an excuse. But anyway, <laughs> okay, I don't want to put it down already, okay? so. She went on this spiritual journey and she was born, she was raised in a um, polygamous household. So she already had polygamy inside her blood, right? So for her, it was normal to sleep with different people and to exchange energy, because that's what you do, right? You exchange energy when you are sleeping with different people. This is why you've always got to be very careful about who you sleep with. She actually has an identical twin sister and she went into a polygamous relationship with this twin sister. Filthy people, stop thinking like that, okay? They never had any type of physical... Oh. She did. My spiritual journey started from health and wellness and also depression. I was depressed because I was dealing with my polygamous relationship with my twin sister. Twin sister, a Babylon twin sister that I, people know that I had a polygamous relationship with around my spiritual journey around three to four years ago. Okay, okay, she, she didn't have any sexual relationship with her sister where they were physical with each other. They did have sexual, an, an, an encounter. Okay, now be careful with these words. Okay, she did have an encounter with her sister with one man. That's Babaji, guys, guys, guys. That's a whole other universe we're gonna talk about there. So, they did have that type of thing going on. Okay, these are people who are trying to unshackle themselves in every which way from Western society. So she went and traveled the world, okay? She met new people who had new ideas, but what she didn't realize that some of these people are just exploiters. They're just there to use these people. Most of the guys who go around toting themselves as being these marabous or spiritual healers and teachers, most of them are interested in two things, women, and money. But they are so good at manipulating women like Netiri. They they don't 
need to do anything else. They can just use the valor of their tongue in order to get whatever they want out of these women. Money, uh, sex, and live a very comfortable life around it. Currently she is now 28 years old, but back when she started her spiritual journey, she was only 23 and she wanted to explore the world. She wanted to explore what the world had to offer. She wanted to get out of this virtual prison that is the United States and she traveled the world. She lived with these sister wives. She became part of uh, more than one family where she was in a polygamous relationship. Eventually she caught the eye of our very own Minister Yada and began a polygamous relationship with him too. Now the intricacies of how this relationship started is actually very typical of the way it goes. So he was in a polygamous relationship with multiple women at first when he met Netiri, he was already in a relationship with multiple women, okay? Now, these other women, of course, knew about one another, but they didn't know about Netiri. I messaged him about being a student. I wanted to learn, I wanted to be a part of the village, I wanted to be a part of the nation. And his message to me was basically saying, you know, he's exactly, I'm exactly what he's looking for. And from then, I was like, okay, hold on. I was asking to be a student, but it looks like he's, turning into something else. So I, I went along with it. I was like, okay, cool. You say I'm you know, the way I'm looking for it. Then okay, cool. So we started to hang out. He took to me on dates and it was really wonderful at the time. But I didn't know that he was dealing with other women. And you know, me and my psychic self, you know, I do tarot readings. I dig deep into the situation and saw that he was dealing with an ex-partner a karmic relationship that he needs to overcome. And then I asked about it and he says, yes, there's somebody that he's dealing with that he needs to release, an ex of his. I'm like, okay, ex-girlfriends, you know, we, I know how it is, you know, you guys can release him, that's all. No, it was a whole wife that I didn't know about. I didn't know that he was dealing with other women. Okay. Ashe and I was with Yada going around Atlanta. Aja was in Ecuador. When Aja came back to Ecuador, he took all of us, gathered all three of us into a hotel and told him what he was doing. He said he wants to do, he want all of us to be in a polygamous relationship with him. We just thought he was just cheating on all of us with all of us, but it wasn't like that. He courted us, got us together, and we became three. We became four, actually, and we came to Pelican's relationship. When he meets these women, he actually talks them into this life, this life that he has, this life that he leads. He speaks to, to these women, these potential ex-wives. He's very good at manipulating people. So that's what he does. He manipulates these women. It wasn't difficult to manipulate her because she had already been in a polygamous relationship in the past. And of course she had grown up very much in a polygamous relationship. Regardless, he never told her that he was having a polygamous relationship. At first, he told her what he tells all of his women. He made it look like it was just a monogamous hookup. He told her that he had an ex-girlfriend that he was trying to release. But the reality is, is that he was in a full-blown relationship with multiple women. I, I mean, are these women naive? Are they that naive to believe that this man was telling the truth? I mean, you know, did they not, did she not question it? You know, I kind of, find it hard to believe the way that certain women just go with their soul. It's a beautiful thing to do, but boy, is it risky. Am I envious? Maybe I am a little bit. I mean, I could never have done that. I just don't have that kind of tongue. I don't have that type of smoothness, you know? Uh, I'm not a bullshitter either. So uh, I wouldn't know how to just go and chat to three women and say, yo, <laughs> They'd probably kick my ass. So Natiri was in this polygamous relationship with Yada and another three women. And things were going well, things were going all smoothly. The fact that she didn't have children with him as well made things much easier for her. The problem many women who go into these polygamous relationships have is that they, they, they sort of believe that sex is overvalued for its um, spiritual connection to that other person. Because they see this man, this man is having sex with multiple women. And 
hey, you know, if you're having sex with multiple women, then it should be okay, right? So a lot of women who enter these polygamous relationships end up sleeping with other men. It's not so much a, oh, well, what's good for him is good for me too. It's more like, Hey, yeah, I can see this. This is beautiful. It's beautiful that we're able to uh, share this, this, this energy. And I want to share it with other beautiful people as well. So they go off and they do whatever they do as well. And they don't see anything wrong with it because they see their man doing it all the time as well. Actually, I remember back in the day when I used to be a kind of a ladies man, you know, I used to kind of joke about how to uh, take a woman, how to make a woman love you. You sort, you sort of cover them, you know, you treat them with love and kindness and everything else. And then afterwards, you hit them with a little bit of mean, you know, and then you're nice and, uh, you know, all fluffy with them once again. And then you hit them again with a bit of mean. So it's nice, hard, nice, hard, and you're sort of, end up corrupting their minds and in that way you manipulate them into loving you. They won't even know what hit them. So women, please be aware of when a man does that because a lot of men are doing it. This is exactly how Yada picked up this woman and managed to put himself in a situation where she was in a fully blown polygamous relationship with him. So everything seemed to be going swimmingly for this unconventional family when this happened. I didn't know he was lying. I was diagnosed with herpes um, a few years ago, dealing mm -hmm. with one of my exes that had it, and just didn't know that he had it. He thought he had it his whole life, but he went through a traumatic experience um, with a relative, a relative, a relative, a relative, and didn't know that he caught it from that relative. Did you sleep with Yada and not tell him you had herpes first? Yeah. And that was dangerous. And that's why I um, take responsibility. Wow. Yeah, I didn't, but I didn't have any breakouts. I literally didn't think it existed. When I had got diagnosed with it, they told me just live my life. Oh, wow. And I could yeah. see why he was upset. Yeah, and I and I totally take responsibility for that. Um, after that, he didn't really touch me or have sex with me like that or even kiss me mm. after that. Um, and it just made me feel like I was unwanted and unloved because of what I, I was diagnosed with, but didn't even see signs of, you know? Right. So it just made me feel like I shouldn't even be in it, you know? And I, I took responsibility for that, yeah. Okay. The thing with that mm -hmm. is that it's not contagious until you have a breakout. Did Yada say he cures herpes? Yeah. Somebody's saying in the chat. That's what I'm saying. That's why I thought I vibrated to him because I thought we can cure each other or like cure whatever was going on. Oh, you so know? you went to him thinking that he can cure. Yeah. And you didn't have any outbreaks. So you was like, I'm good. I'm good. Like I just loved health. I wanted to, I was about the mission. You know what I'm saying? That's why I stayed. Uh -huh. Like I take full responsibility. You're supposed to tell them right before you even get intimate. Yeah. Like that's all me. Right. Okay. So you heard that right. Netiri caught herpes. She got herpes from one of her ex-boyfriends, okay? And as we all know, herpes is a virus. It's extremely difficult to get rid of. In fact, it's almost impossible to get rid of. But in the same way, it is difficult to transfer herpes. You'd need to have an open wound or an open sore. Now, she had already been diagnosed with herpes. I'm not sure which simplex she had but she had been diagnosed with it. She had a sexual encounter with Yada, who of course was with her. And then of course, she never told him until the end. So what do you think Yada did when he was told about this? Huh? What did Yada do? This, this powerful shaman, this powerful marabou, this man who has this almost God-like ability to heal other humans. What did he do when he was told about this? Well, he seemed to act very human-like. He got angry and stopped sleeping with her straight away. Which is very strange, don't you think? I mean, if you are a powerful healer and the woman that you've been sleeping with tells you, okay, yeah, I, I have herpes, what are you gonna do? 
You're not going to sweat it, are you? You're a powerful marab. You're a powerful uh, healer. Okay, you could get rid of these sicknesses. You could take care of HIV. You could take care of all the bad viruses. They are no problem with you. Okay, so if this woman is telling you this, you're not going to kick her out, are you? If you if you are that powerful at healing, you're not going to kick this woman out. You're not going to kick her to the curb. What you're going to do is you're going to tell her, hey. It's no problem. That's so sad that you had to deal with this all alone. I cannot believe that you kept this to yourself. Why didn't you tell me? This is me here. Hey, you don't have to go to any uh, pharmacy. You don't have to go and see a chemist. Hey, I got you. I got you. That's what I would do, of course, because clearly I have the power to heal. It, now I can totally understand Yada if he turned around and said, Hey, listen, I cannot believe you didn't tell me this. This is a breach of our trust. I cannot believe you've done something like this. But he didn't do anything like that. He didn't say anything like that. He spoke to her as if the virus was dangerous. It actually can be dangerous if it's not treated. But he spoke to her as if it was a, a life-threatening disease and something that he would not be able to take care of. That's very unshaman-like. It's very ungodlike. For me, Minister Yada's attitude towards Natiri when she told him of this pretty simple STD that she had and in all probability had not transferred to him. Can you transfer herpes through, through discharge? Through bodily fluids? Blood? I don't know, I'm not a medical doctor. Regardless, it is unlikely that he had caught herpes from her. I think he wouldn't have been happy if he did. For me, this is almost conclusive proof that Minister Yada is not a shaman or a marabou of any kind. He is no healer. Because if he could, then he wouldn't have reacted the way that he did towards Natiri. Now, do I believe in real marabous? Yeah, of course they are. They do exist. But the majority of them are not African Americans. The good thing about African American marabous, or marabous as they like to call themselves, is that they are in a better place to deal with people of their own ethnicity, in a better place to communicate with them, and they are therefore in a better position to sell themselves to them. Let's try and read a bit of body language from Natiri. Take a look at this. Like I take full responsibility, you're supposed to tell them right before you even get intimate. Yeah. Like, that's all me. Right, okay. It's clear to me from her body language, the way she looks down when she is uh, thinking about what happened. It's a face of regret. It's a face of sorrow. It's a, it's a face of sadness. It's clear to me that she is sorry for what she did. But in Atlanta, people know how serious STDs are. I wouldn't have been happy myself if a woman had done the same thing to me. But that is the reason why most men don't go into polygamous relationships. You know, like I said, Atlanta seems to have this uh, moniker of being this place where people that look like us can go out and be themselves, be happy, be free. But it is not immune to the same problems that the rest of the world has. From my perspective, if you are with a man who cannot keep control of himself, who has no self-control, then you are not with a good person. You need to be careful. I have absolutely no sympathy for this man. He is greedy and he is gluttonous. That's the very antithesis of what it means to be spiritual. You are your own worst enemy. Mike Tyson himself said this when he went celibate. Mike Tyson said that when he went celibate, he felt powerful. He said he never felt better in all of his life. And I can concur because I also, at one point in my life, in my adult life, I went celibate too for over six months. And I can tell you this now, that was the most powerful feeling of freedom that I had ever had in decades. I felt untouchable because this power that was being held over me, this power that had once destroyed my family in the past because I wasn't able to control myself and I didn't have the talking abilities of Minister Yada. So, you know, this family was destroyed when they found out what I was doing. I don't think now, looking back at things, it should have, but yeah. Um, but that's what happened. It destroyed my family. And when I went celibate for that period of time, I I felt 
so powerful. I felt like I was untouchable because all of a sudden, it didn't matter what happened. When I went through that period and I was denying women the ability to share my energy, that's what I was doing basically. I was, it was the, uh, I was closing my doors and I was keeping my energy to myself. I, I never felt powerful. I've never attracted so many women in my entire life. That period of time was crazy, absolutely crazy. It was only four years ago and it was absolutely insane. Women were inboxing me all the time because all of a sudden I wasn't interested in what they had to offer, not physically anyway. It was after that period of time that I was able to hold down a long-term monogamous relationship because all of a sudden I didn't, I didn't have to react to what a woman was offering to me. That is the most powerful, most liberating thing you could do. It's the most powerful thing that I've pretty much ever felt. It's even more powerful than having intercourse with a woman. It really is. And women can feel that energy. They can feel it when you have that pent up energy built up inside you. And it, it attracts them. They want you more. There is nothing, I tell you this now, if you're a single man, right? And I'm going to tell you this out of my own experience. If you're a single man and you want a beautiful woman to covet you, the best thing you can tell them is that you are in a happy relationship with your wife, that you are happily married. I'll tell you this right now, guys. Sometimes women just, they just make me wonder. They can be so beautiful yet so cruel. Honestly, guys, I've stopped trying to understand them. That's why I'm just with one of them. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get into a polygamous relationship, but there are those men who truly do believe in the power of polygamy. And there are those men who want to exploit it to fulfill their own desires. Now that takes us back to the question that I asked at the beginning, this divine Yada. She must be dealing with this. She must be keeping this family together whilst dealing with this man who is basically running around doing whatever he wants with his little, you know, doing whatever he, he wants because he has that, I don't know, you know when you got little man syndrome and you're constantly trying to validate yourself? I think that's what he's got and I think that's why he keeps surrounding himself with all these light-skinned, curly-haired women, uh, which, which is no offence, you know, they're all very beautiful women if you see them, but what kind of a person needs to constantly have validation from other women? It is clearly weak men that need that sort of validation from women all the time. So right now you have a lot of men making their way from the diaspora, making their way back to Africa and calling themselves Muslim. Oh, I'm a Muslim, you know, and you know, praying every now and again, just so they can have the opportunity to have a polygamous relationship within a society where it is normal. I count myself lucky because I have found that special woman, that special someone in my life. It is very difficult to be in that position. It's happened to me maybe twice in my entire life, okay? So it is very difficult to be in that situation. So to be in the same situation where you're with two women, who you meet, who you're handling, who you're dealing with at the same time, who are both that special person in your entire life, that tells me that you do not have an understanding of relationships. Because the reality is this, it is ultra rare to find that one special person and to cultivate that relationship properly the way it needs to be done. But doing it with two different women or three or four or five Boy, and those women who understand it, who believe in it, or who also go for it, for me, there must be something broken inside them. So in the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Divine Yada. We're gonna talk about these accusations. We're gonna try and find out whether there is any truth in the accusations that are being thrown at Minister Yada about the physical abuse he has given to all of his wives. So now guys, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Have you been in an abusive relationship in the past? How did you get out of it? It'd be really good to hear your thoughts, your experience on this. So please leave them in the comment section below. Okay, so that's all I have time for for today. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I would like to give an extra special thank you to my Patreons and I will see you in the next one. Until the next time, please think twice. ta a bit.
Mm-hmm.